What's up, everyone? My name is Matthew Dale, and I am here to help you play better, sound great, and understand more. And we're going to talk more about the fractal ecosystem today. In particular, I'm going to give you three tips for understanding loudness within the XFX3 FM9 or FM3. Okay, so I've got an empty preset called up, and I'm just going to call in one of my templates here. This is in my Fractal Favorites starter pack. If you want to learn more about uh, this template pack, you can hit the link in the description box below. Um, let's see. Let's do a Plexi today. Let's, let's do the 1959 SLP. And here is my template called up. Bridge pickup on my Strandberg. We have this sound. <laughs> Nice, thick plexi tones coming from the treble channel of the 1959 SLP. I am running my favorite greenback IRs. And then here are my amp settings for the plexi. Now, my first tip is using the preset leveling tool. If you go up here to tools, and you can do this on the Axe FX3, uh, the FM9, the FM3, navigate down to preset leveling, or you can hit Command L or Control L, and it will pull up this box here. And we have a couple of meters here that show us our left, left channel and right channel. So I'm just tickling the red, as they might say. Now, if you want to give yourself a little bit more wiggle room, this will actually control your amp level, the, the level coming out of your amp block. So if I move this down... <laughs> I've got a little bit more headroom if I want a little bit more, I can get a little bit more. If I'm going to be using a boost or something, then I will probably give myself maybe a little bit more wiggle room, like that way when I boost for a lead, let's say by adding in a filter block, one of my favorite tricks here. Let's just boost this up. How about 2 dB? Now I'm gonna go back to that preset leveling tool, wherever it went, here it is. So now this filter is active because this is capturing the output uh, or the level of the output. Um, it's gonna show, it's gonna reflect the filter block in there as well. <laughs> wherever it went. And then one more time, just with chords, here is the um, amp by itself. Here's the boost from the filter. So I'm still not clipping. I'm not getting anywhere near the max of these meters. I'm just tipping over the red a little bit. This individual level down here is actually gonna correspond to the output block level, this guy here. I don't often touch this. I try to dial in all my tones where really the majority of my level is gonna be coming through the amplifier. Just like in a real world rig, I'm gonna use the amp level to set my general level. So when you are making your presets, um, be sure to use that preset leveling tool and make your adjustments in the amp block. That's where I make most of my adjustments for level. Now, let's go into tip number two, which is going to be um, your output signal level. So if I go into the setup menu and I go down to audio, you can see in the output, I've got my outputs of, of output one and two set to plus four dBU. Plus four dBU is what would be commonly referred to as pro level or professional line level. So studio rack equipment um, that are set up for line level, mixing consoles that are set up for line level, um, and FRF or speakers, that sort of thing, those are going to want to see, in general, plus four dBU. That's gonna give you the best signal to noise ratio and you're not gonna have to, your engineer isn't gonna have to do a lot of, a lot more work of increasing your level by means of like a mic pre um, or really pushing the fader or anything like that. I am, most of the time, I am always using plus four dBU when I'm going to a mixing console or into an FRFR speaker. 
The other setting in here would be negative 10 dB, uh, and this would be more like consumer level line level. So if you are plugged into, say, like a home stereo or I don't know, like bookshelf speakers or a surround sound uh, unit, I don't know, something like that, you might want to try um, negative 10. That way you're not clipping the input of your receiver. I've only really um, used this live once where I was actually clipping the input, um, even turning my knob down, which we'll get to the knob in a second, even having my knob down a significant amount, I was still hitting the console, which I thought was kind of weird. I was still hitting the console at a very high level. So I padded down to negative 10 and it solved my issues there. So without changing a lot of your level on your grid anywhere, sometimes just padding the output level down to negative 10 could be a get out of jail free card. Now, the last thing for level that I think is important to understand is the actual knob level itself on the front of the unit, whether that's on the top of the unit, like on the FM3, those little knobs up there, output one and two, or the FM3 and the Axe FX that have the bigger knobs on the front face for output one, two, three, or on the Axe FX output four as well. Those physical knobs will control your overall output level um, to the jacks on the back. Those are good for customizing your level without, again, changing anything on the grid or within your presets. However, if you're in like a rehearsal situation or a live situation where you are repeating the same show and you're using the same presets night after night after night, you're gonna wanna make sure that you keep that output level the same. Otherwise, your front of house engineer might have to restructure fader levels and that sort of thing. Now, I typically have my output one and two levels at 75%, and there's an easy way to double check this. If you go to the setup menu and you pan over to your ADC levels, you can see where those physical knobs are. So while I'm setting up before every single show, I make sure that I'm running at 75%. That way I can ensure that I'm using the same level or I'm sending the same level. So there you guys have it. Those are my three tips for understanding loudness in the fractal ecosystem. Uh, if you want to learn more about my templates, I'll have that in the description box below. And feel free to check out my Fractal Favorites Amps and Cavs Guide for some of my preferred IRs. My name is Matthew Dale. Play better, sound great, and understand more, and I will see you on the next one.